Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new rubrics tool available in Google Classroom. Now, this is a tool that's in a beta testing period, and so not everyone has access to it. So I thought I'd make a video about how it works for those of you who are curious, but don't have access to it quite yet. So I'm here in my Google Classroom, and I'm going to go to my Classwork section, and I'm going to create an assignment just like I would create any other assignment. So now I'm gonna go in and say, I'll just call this assignment number one. It doesn't really matter what I call it. And I'll give instructions to the class, do this assignment. You know, point value, due date, this is all the same as it ever was in Google Classroom. And I'll put it in one of my topics here, Revolutionary War. And down here, you'll see Create Rubric. So let's hit Create Rubric. And now I have this option to fill out a rubric. Okay. Now I can use scoring or not using scoring. Okay. So we can turn that off okay. or we can turn it on and fill out my rubric. I can put it in point values. You can use whatever point values you like. And I'll just put it my level as 25 because that's going to match my point value. But you could certainly write your level as being you know, something like exceeds expectations. Maybe put in 25 in parentheses. Whatever works for you. When I've made my rubrics, I always just use point values across the across the top for my levels. Uh, I'm not into writing fancy descriptions of the level itself. Then the description, I'll just say, for the sake of brevity today, perfect. Then we'll do the next part of the rubric. And so on and so forth. We'll keep that going. And we'll fill out this part with 10 points and my level will be 10 points. Now, as you can see, I can keep going all the way across there. Now let's add another criterion. Maybe we'll call it use of evidence. Put in my point value again, my level and description. And we can keep going throughout. Now, as I do this, bear in mind that when I use my scoring, I have 25 points, 20 points, but I can split the difference when I actually go to do the scoring in my, my rubric or in my final grade book. And so I'll fill this part in, teen. And do one more. So, there we have it. Now I have all of my rubric filled out. Right, my point values are gonna be out of 25 and my total is going to be out of 50. So I have this rubric all set up. Let's hit the save button. And we can now assign it to the class. The class will see the rubric along with the assignment itself. Now the assignment itself, I want to Make sure I include this document. So there's my sample assignment number one that I want to include with them. Give every student a copy. And now we'll assign it. And next I'll show you what it looks like to actually score something using this rubric. All right, so we're looking at my sample student here in my Google Classroom. We can see that Mason has just turned in this assignment that we are using the rubric for. And we'll click on the assignment. And when we do this, we're going to see, of course, his assignment. 
And as usual, we could go in and use the comment bank. Or, if I hit grading, see that little grading button? I have my rubric right here, and I can go and say, you know, perfect. And then down here, use of evidence, we'll say very good. And now we have this tallied up, 45 out of 50 points. But as I mentioned, you could split the difference between a couple of categories, or say maybe 23 points instead of doing 25 or 20. I can split that difference. Three tallied, there's my final grade. 86 out of 100 to keep the math consistent. And return it. Now the downside to this rubric feature in Google Classroom is that you do have to make a new rubric for every one of your assignments. So if I go to make a new assignment right now, and I call this one assignment number two, you'll notice that as I do this, I don't have an option to include an existing rubric. I just have to go and make a new rubric. So that's a bit of a downside for now. Hopefully Google changes that in the future. So that's a short overview of the rubric feature available in the latest version of Google Classroom. And again, if you don't see this feature in your Google Classroom yet, talk to your domain administrator and see if he or she can sign you up for the rubrics beta that's available to G Suite for Education users. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com and practicaledtech.com.